Hey, this is Chuck, and you are listening to Fans with Bands, the podcast where we talk to the fans and the bands they dig about life, music, and whatever the hell else we want to talk about. Today on Fans with Bands, we are talking to Gutter Swap. Check it out. Nice. Hey, this is Chuck with Fans with Bands, and I'm talking to Mike from Gutter Swamp. Mike, how you doing? I am doing great. Awesome. Doing swampy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and uh, we've got a couple of fans here. One is is just has the name user, um, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. And then there's Jennifer J. Uh, Jennifer, can you hear us? Looks like she's muted. Well, Jennifer, we hope we can you can hear us. And if you unmute, then you can chat with us. So there you go. <laughs> All right. So so Mike, Gutter Swamp, how did the band get formed? Because I'm curious about this. All right. Well, it started out. Um, I knew probably five or six different people that I wanted to jam with from doing booking shows. Yeah. And the way it added up is I just said, who do I really just want to hang out with and get to know better in the right. music scene and um, people that I respected musically and, and personally. So I just reached out to a few people and it was pretty instant that everybody just grabbed on and then nice. found a day that would work for us to all get together. And then within the first practice that we had, we wrote tidbits of probably five, six different songs. No oh, shit. Oh, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. So you guys got a new album coming out and I was checking that out and it's got those big, you know, like burly riffs with that ton of groove. Um, but I think the the really crazy thing is you've got the um, you get you have the harmonica that bluesy harp in there. So how did how did that happen? Uh, that was kind of a joke, but it, it worked out. <laughs> and the first song on the on our first release, Viceroy Cigar, they're chugging along to a riff. I was like, "Good, right here, a little lead into the verse." And they're like, "Well, how does it go? How does it go?" Making fun of me. And I was yeah. like, well, if I had something, like maybe even a harmonica. And then I was like, you know what? That that's actually gold. I think that would work well. Let me let me see. And then I went on Amazon and snagged one. And at the next practice, I'm playing harmonica. No shit. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Crazy. Right. So, so you hadn't played harmonica before? No, no. It was actually um rift from beatboxing a little bit you know like yeah. um, high school stuff like that beatboxing so people can freestyle and right stuff like that transit wow. translated pretty pretty well actually pretty Oosh. easily that's awesome that's so cool <laughs> yeah because i love how it's integrated into the tunes and it sounds cool it's like i don't think i've ever heard a metal song that has um harmonica in there but it's it it works because you you guys have that kind of bluesy roots to your music um, yeah a lot of the four four, four riffs and, and big booming drum hits you know yeah yeah exactly exactly um so what was the you mentioned like that you guys when you first practiced you came up with like actually quite a few of those songs what what is that songwriting process like for you guys what do you just jam and then come up with stuff um normal practice show up and then vent a little bit about the day's <laughs> habits and stuff like that and then right. um after that jump on loosen up with a, a song or three and then we just go wherever our head takes us that practice you know if we want to yeah. um work on a, a new song that we already have formed then we jump on that if there's something in somebody's head and we just want to get it down we just go all over the place with it Very you got nice. a saying that we go by you know if you force it it's probably crap you know right right so we we try to stay away from that just let it flow yeah and yeah no, that totally makes sense good time having fun you know <laughs> right yeah for sure i mean yeah if you're not having fun making your own music then there's something fucking wrong right yeah it's definitely a hobby yeah. you know and hobbies are fun yeah i already have a job where i work 50 hours i don't need another one of those <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> so uh, when um when you guys were getting together um was there any like 
like did did you all like have that same kind of basic background as far as the music that you wanted to make um or were there you know certain elements that somebody brought to the table that that kind of gave the unique feel for the band well everybody had previous projects that were they were in already and right. everybody has vastly different inspiration as well um you know you got guys that the older guys that are more about the thrash scene and the old 80s metal and stuff like that yeah and then we got newer uh, younger guy younger guys in there that are more from like metalcore scene right. and then with me i was i was big into hip-hop in the 90s all the you know biggie and tupac and stuff like that yeah and then that branched into the new metal with uh, limp biscuit and corn and even slipknot and all that yeah um kill switch engage that's that's still metalcore but you know it's um got some of those vibes to it but we're all over the place and that's why when you come out to a show i let everybody know off the bat if you don't like the first song wait till the next song if you don't like that song wait till the next song they all got different vibe you know they all got different influences and you can see it with each one yeah yeah for sure i mean um there definitely is that that transition between each of the tunes as far as like uh um there's a core element of that kind of groove. They all have that kind of groove to them, but then there's um, little bits of, um, I don't know if I, if it's just like other hints of other genres in there. So that's a, that's a cool uh, insight into that. Um, so the new, is, is this your first album that you guys are putting out? That's coming yeah, out? Yeah, this is our, our debut album, the self-titled album. Nice. And awesome. this Saturday is the release of that. We dropped a couple singles um, just to get everybody's reaction to it. Yeah. We've been playing these songs live for a while now. Right. So it's cool to actually get it all on tape and then come up with the whole artwork and get yeah. it all together. We wanted to get an actual physical album together because uh, it's, it's something different when you go to a show and you get that album in your hand and you're able to open it and check out the artwork and yeah. see what the musicians actually have to say. On it. It's a little different than just click and play on YouTube, you know? Yeah, for sure. It's a little I, different. I mean, I, I'm, well, I'm old school, so I like the physical copy. I like to have the physical item as opposed to just, you know, digital is fine. It's cool, you know, because you can have it on your phone, you can pull it up in your computer, whatever, but... Um, right. have, having that physical, like, like you said, to be able to look at it, check out the artwork. So the artwork is pretty cool. Um, who came up with that? As a collaboration, um, it's definitely homage to the Detroit scene. You know, we got a, a bunch of stuff in there that, that calls out to it, you know, floating Fago bottles and Detroit <laughs> free press. Right. And, you know, a bunch of other stuff in there. Um, did a little shout out to my family in there too. My mom loved butterflies. So there's some butterflies flying over some toxic waste. And, <laughs> uh, my dad raised beagles, you know, for rabbit hunting. Yeah. So I got a beagle in there next to a guy testing some um, radioactive materials. <laughs> and yeah, the, the, the alligator on there, that, that was kind of a, a joke. My, my drummer, he was listening to one of the songs and he's like, what are you, what are you talking about? Julio? You know, I don't say nothing about no Julio. And he's like, I guess that's our mascot's name. We'll make him the alligator, you know? <laughs> Julio. Nice. <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. <laughs> so we kind of touched on. What's up? Little... What's up? <laughs> we touched a little we, bit. Of... We got a, we got Who's a visitor. Here? All right. The other guy, the guy the that guy. made it. All <laughs> right. Hey. <laughs> of course. Uh, that's that's matt hey matt uh, what's going on man because you have headphones on well, yeah i got <laughs> headphones on because i can't hear this <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> right i figured flying solo I, it didn't really matter right 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 right. but um let let me let me see if i can yes if you can hear this if i unplug it all right cool <laughs> <laughs> crazy so um i was gonna get into um the you know, kind of like the origin of you guys, as far as, you know, being musicians, who, who inspired you, Mike and Matt to uh, want to play music? Matt, yeah. who inspired you to play music? 
Like what bands, what groups, stuff like that. Oh shit, man! I was a grunge kid, man. Like, Can you hear them at all? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. like my. Uh, I mean, I, I guess probably before before grunge, like my first rock album as a kid was fucking Dookie, right? <laughs> um, you know, before that, I was you know living in Mount Clemens. I was into like rap, hip hop, old school gangster shit, and whatever. And and I heard Dookie, and for <laughs> some reason that basket case did it for me and then from there i was just like i gotta learn how to play guitar you know i <laughs> fucking started listening to all this other stuff and, and you know was... well they listen to a lot of eagles and rolling stones and stuff like that cool i don't know i didn't do anything fun like that because my mom had all the control of the music in the household when i was a kid and she listened to like John Denver and Ann Murray. <laughs> <laughs> no thanks. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Uh, what was your? Uh, what was the very first concert that you guys went to? What's well, the first concert you went to? Uh, the first concert that I went to was The Prodigy with Meat Beat Manifesto opening for them. Holy crap! <laughs> At uh, I think it was at St. Andrews. That sounds um, aggressive. It yeah, it was <laughs> <laughs> like the whole floor turned into the pit that you think it would be when Smack My Bitch Up came on. <laughs> nice, like, nice. It was exactly what you would expect. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, first one. Mine's like complete opposite. <laughs> First one I went to was uh, Pine Knob, Blue Oyster Cult. I don't know who else was playing, but um, kind of snuck in with my sister. He's like, oh, I guess I have an extra ticket. If you want to come hang out, I guess you yeah. can. And then, um, <laughs> I just kept walking around and finding circles and hitting the doobie and kept passing it and kept finding different circles, different doobies. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. How old were you uh, guys when you went to those concerts? Can you hear me? I, uh, I think I was like somewhere between 13 and 15. Oh, I think shit. I was 15. Nice. I yeah, we're, like... we're both right around 40. So that was a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So, uh, you know, kind of on that same uh, vein, like, so what was the very first album that you ever bought? Or it could have been gifted to you. Man, the first album that I bought. It was a collective of albums because they had the what 12 CDs for a penny or something like that. <laughs> yes. And, and out of those, like the first ones was um Offspring Smash, like some weird Al Yankovic, um <laughs> like Death Row's greatest hits. Uh th there was like a bunch of them. And I was just like, Ooh, that looks cool. And you take yeah. a little stamp and you lick it and you stick it to the postcard and you mail it back. And then next thing you know, you owe them $7,000. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. That I'm, I'm glad I was a minor at that time because they couldn't take me to court. So. <laughs> uh, first album I bought was uh, smashed by the offspring. Awesome. Very cool. That's fucking excellent. And, and, uh, so for a question for Matt, like, uh, what was it about the offspring that you made you want to buy that album? What made you want the offspring as the album? Uh, well, you know, like I said, I was like just starting to like transfer out of like the whole like gangster rap thing into like, what the hell? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, into like uh into to you know i guess pop punk and grunge and shit like that yeah and i don't know what it was about the offspring i i, I um i just really liked the riffs you know and I, I when i when i first started listening to to rock and metal it was just always the guitars that got me and you know you know, in hindsight, I look at it and I go, oh, yeah, those riffs actually, you know, not too like complex or anything, but like they they hit the spot. Yeah. You know, and, 
as somebody who was just starting to cross over into into that genre of music it was you know it was just uh, i had to have it awesome it's definitely live and energetic and, and in your face music that's for sure especially when you're younger yeah uh, helps help put the words the thoughts that you're having you know yep yeah i'm with sure. you on that for sure uh so we've got jennifer and we've got katie so uh jennifer can you hear us oh uh, yes oh hey so hey, can you hear me what up, Jen? yeah hey jennifer hey um i just i just wanted to come and and how much i appreciate hearing all the inspirations because the first thing i noticed about gutter swamp when i heard them live was that it was all stuff that was easy for me to listen to. I'm not usually someone to listen to metal. Like, I'm kind of like, I don't know what they're saying. I don't get it, you know, yeah. but, I, but it was such a blend of inspiration of all the songs I know and familiar with. So it's easy for me to listen to. Awesome. And it made me come to realize that, that when, when it comes to heavy metal, they're geniuses that they can think so fast and they can play <laughs> the drums so fast and do those instruments so fast. And the way they're gonna swamp when they're all together is you can tell that their timing is amazing, that they really play with each other and can hear each other yeah. at the same time. I just wanted to say thank you guys. And that was a great question. So now I know who their inspiration is. Awesome, cool. Very, so Jennifer, do you have any questions for those guys? Thank you, Jen. That was awesome. Yeah. Um, my question is, um, what's the process look like when you guys are songwriting? Do you do, you do it together and just, kind of like would love to be a fly in the wall like when you guys put a song together because it's always got some amazing sounds in it like from the beginning to the end. oh there you go it, you're back you were gone for a little bit did you get the question I wonder um i heard getting of it i think it was okay. regarding what does it what does process? it look like when you guys are writing a song together like to put your instruments um, together from like the scratch, like what's it look like when you guys are putting a song together and you are writing it? Uh, putting a song together, how do we write? Uh, lately, one of us come up with an idea, um, whether it's somebody with a, a guitar riff or me with some lyrics or just something like that. Aaron came across with Hell of a Week as um, he was having a bad week and he <laughs> wanted to write a song about it. And he, he said, I said, all right, well, what's something pissed off and he just started chugging along nice you know bill jumped in on drums and then all right let, let's strap on and see where it goes then um with our more recent songs it's a similar thing is we'll just start playing something that somebody likes or hey i've been noodling with this a little bit mm -hmm. and then we just riff off of it and see where it goes and i take my phone here and i record what it sounds like then uh send it to everybody else after practice for us to dissect and two of this and four of that or try three of this and two of that and another cool thing about writing with this band is even though i'm on vocals it doesn't necessarily mean i have no say in what they're doing on guitars and drums and, oh, cool. and likewise but likewise with my vocals uh, if, if they think i should try something else and ego set aside let's write some good music and let's have fun with it i don't want to sit there and and play a song I don't like, and I don't right. expect them to do the same. So it's a mutual respect and a, and a trust that, you know, everybody's going to come up with some good stuff. Awesome. You got anything you want to add to that, Matt? <laughs> Sorry, uh, I ran on about it. A no, little that, I mean, <laughs> you know, we, we haven't really had a whole lot of chance of, to write a whole lot of stuff since I've joined. So, you know, most of the, most of the stuff that everybody's heard is going to be what the, you know what the process was under the old build anyway um so that's probably more relevant to what they're what they're hearing nice yeah come back at me on that one when we have the next album. <laughs> <laughs> i can tell that they like what they're playing and that they love each other when awesome. i hear them play very cool i heard them play live twice so so jennifer a question for you is um you know in that along the lines of like first albums what was your first album that you bought uh well my favorite my first album yeah. i ever liked was um donna summer nice the one where she's standing on the building in new york city or sitting on it 
Yeah. And I just go around in circles. I love disco and I hear some funk and disco in Gunner Swamp. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Like I'm crazy for Gunner Swamp, really. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, so we also have Katie. Katie, can you hear us? As my wife. Oh, all right. Uh, she's muted. So, uh, hey, Katie. <laughs> Uh, all right. Probably giving the baby a bath or something like that. Yeah. Oh, she, uh, she just, uh, chatted. She can hear us, but she's muted. So, all right. Uh, yeah, she's putting the baby down, Mike. So just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> excellent. Uh, so what is Chuck Marshall's favorite first album. Oh, it was my first album. Uh, so my very first, um, so I'll do, I'll, I'll answer that question twice. Very first album I ever bought, uh, was Elton John's goodbye yellow brick road. Um, cause I just, I loved Elton John when I was a kid. This was, I think I was, uh, 12 maybe. Um, and then the very first heavy album I got into was Kiss Alive. Um, I heard Kiss Alive when I was in sixth grade and immediately became a Kiss fan, listened to the Kiss Army, you know, enrolled. I was like, had the posters all over in the house and everything. My mom thought I was crazy. Was like, what the, what is this demon in the house? Why, why? <laughs> but they were cool about it. They were all, you know, they were, they encouraged the music. So that was, that was fun. But yeah, that's, that, those were my first albums. Um, so if you guys could go uh, have a beer or, you know, whatever you like to drink with uh, uh, anybody, it could be a musical idol, could be, um, you know, historical idol, whatever, or current living person doesn't have to be dead or alive. But um, who would you like to go sit down and have a beer with? So, Mike, I'll hand it off to Matt first. Who do All you, right. alive or dead? Who's one person you'd want to sit with and have a beer with, or have a chat with? Uh, well, like I said, I was a, a huge Alice in Chains fan back in the day. So, if I have an opportunity like that, I'd take a I'd take a beer with with Lane Staley. Nice. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, I would too. <laughs> How about you, Mike? Uh, oh, Mike, we lost you there for a bit. So what was your answer? I said I would have to sell pitch Elon Musk. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'd want to, I'd want to see some like horrible B-rated gutter swamp in space movies. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> oh my god uh jennifer how who about would, you who would uh who would gutter schlaf like to um like what song do you want to be remembered for that's my next question <laughs> awesome what, what song would you guys like to be remembered for? i'm frozen there you go what, what song would you like to be remembered for Oh, well, uh, is, it, is it one that we've written already or, or yeah uh, you know for me i have to say that um because i wasn't involved with the writing of any of the stuff on the first album i can't say anything on that one other than it's you know probably not written yet um but uh well maybe just a play on that one what's your favorite one to play yeah, it's your favorite one to play out of our set. Oh, shit. Yeah, look at the list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll go over to the list. Uh, dive Bar. Oh, yeah. It's super fun to me. Dive Bar Rockstar. That's awesome. that's a fun one. That's for sure. <laughs> awesome. Got more, more of a swing to it. Try to try to incorporate that old, that, that 80s rock in that, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. How about you, Mike? Which one uh, do you want to be most known for, or, which, or what is your favorite? Um, out of our set, it's Funky Town, Funky Town Road, and that would have nice. been my second. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that that one's our, our crown jewel. I think it has the most twists and turns, and it's more most roller coaster esque. Yeah, very and, dynamic uh, song. Yeah, very dynamic. It does. It does jumping a lot back and forth with the vocals and um, harmonicas in there a lot as well. There's a, you know, a, a fake ending at, at the song and it, it's the one that we play at the end of the set. 
nice. makes everybody jump around and dance around and gets a lot of crowd reaction. But as of now, that's the one. But I, I don't think that that's our peak. I think we got a lot of a lot of creativity in the chamber, and we're just barely scratching the top of it. So our sophomore album, I expect. So, Hello. Uh, uh, yeah, you cut it out there a little bit, Mike. So you were you were talking about like the second album. So <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> what what were you saying about the second album? You're you're thinking it'll be more what? Yeah, I think that it'll eclipse the first one um, nice. with the creativity that we're coming through with this, and then just keep going from there. Keep writing better material and more diverse material. Awesome. So are you guys actually? Um, when you, uh, I gotta imagine that you're incorporating some of that into your set now. Do you got new tunes that are rolling out into into the shows? Um, no new tunes with this set coming up. With this one, we're just sticking straight to the album. Um, that way, stay true to the album release. Just yeah, get all that out there. Um, no filler, no cover tunes, nothing like that. It's all originals. Nice. Um, with the party itself, we got four other bands playing and um you know we'll we'll be classic style heading out the night at the end of the night we'll come on nice the stage set wise we got it planned to have it look pretty swampy out there and <laughs> gonna try to keep it to where it's it's more festive not just yeah five bands on a stage throughout the night and get up there in between sets and and raz the crowd a little bit and have a good time with it, you know? Right. Have some fun with it. Make it a show. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Um, so as far as like um, the, uh, oh, where was I going with that? Um, the, it, the name, Gutter Swamp. How did you guys come up with that? Who, who came up yeah. with that name? <laughs> we were trying to, he's asking about how the name of the band came yeah. up. With that, it was, we just started jamming out songs and like carving out songs. Oh, okay, we got it. And it just <laughs> fell out in description. So <laughs> we got the little like 10 word description of the band, you know, so grimy, it's gutter, so slimy, it's swamp. <laughs> just fell out and there we go <laughs> awesome uh so we might have uh touched on this a little bit as far as like uh when you were talking about first yeah. concerts um but it, if you guys could play anywhere in the world where, where would you like to play and who would you like to play with like another band you play anywhere in the world and with any other band who would it be in where? Oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> feel the first one. <laughs> I, I just watched the movie a little bit ago, so it's fresh in my head. But I'd want to go back to the CBGB days, yeah, where that was like wall to wall packed. You know, seven days a week, you get in there. Yeah, like I, I would love to get up there with any of the regulars from any of the nights, just to be a fly on the wall. <laughs> if I was able to, you know help them swap gear in the middle of songs. I'd have been happy at that point. You know? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that sounds yeah. great. Uh, I've just always wanted to fucking go to Australia. <laughs> I've never, <laughs> never been outside of the country other than to Canada. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Australia seems you know, so weird with all the wildlife that wants to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> right. Um, I don't know. Where. Um, What's that huge um, place where all the orchestras play in, yeah, in Sydney, Australia? I think it's in Sydney, yeah. The orchestra or it's right. Yeah, um, I think it's in Sydney. So that would be pretty rad. And what do I want to play with? Uh, I've already played with a lot of, like, I've already shared a stage with a lot of bands that I admire, just opening for various projects here and there. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait. 
I think we, we lost you again. Mike, are you there? <laughs> that would be rowdy. As long as that we're right. Yeah, yeah I'm there. I've, I've definitely got a lot of tool influence in me. And Nice. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah. So tool. Awesome. Very cool. Yep. Yep. And tool in Australia, that just seems like a mind warping <laughs> show. <laughs> it does. <laughs> to, to be able to be there and, and then to have, you know, those crazy assholes. <laughs> you gotta have the gotta have the scorpions play too. Right. Oh, sure. <laughs> now that would be a crazy lineup right there. <laughs> oh my god. That's awesome. So um as far as like so you get the the um the album release coming up this weekend, but what do you got going on for the summer? What's the what's the plans for the band? Um this summer we got a gig out in Lansing at the Music Box. Um, what else we got going on? We got uh, Bay City. Nice. We got a gig out in Bay City. That's like seven different bands playing from like three to ten, all ages. It's like a rock and rummage type deal, art show. Awesome. So that, that'll that be cool as well. We just booked a show at Harpo's at the end of July. with Holy the shit. um yeah the the new metal what is it new metal makeover tour oh like yeah that. with uh hep hep pe and uh, head pe edema flaw nice. the crazy town nice that'll be cool yeah that'll be really cool that's our our first time with this gig cool Rose I... again <laughs> yeah. it must be this goddamn storm as near as I can figure. That's exactly it. It's fucking with us. That I'm sitting here in a freaking garage. <laughs> so, uh, do you guys have any like, um, like before you do it? It could be before practice, but um, before a gig, do you have any kind of rituals you have to do? Things you got to get yourself psyched up for? Any pre-gig rituals? Uh, not really. Just kind of. <laughs> And so straight up on me, and you know that's that's about all I got. like. I, beyond that, I just start you know knocking back enough brews to take the edge off a little bit, and then, nice, uh, and then get up there and play. And as the breaks, then uh, then it's gonna be a good time. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah. With me, it's the seven seven bean burritos from Taco Bell. I do that before every show. <laughs> no, <laughs> not really. <laughs> you guys would hate me, yeah. but uh. Um, I'm a, the monster coffee drinks. Yeah. I like, I like that about 10, 15 minutes before stage. It kind of coats the throat and it gives me a little pep. Yeah. And then, um, I also cough drops. I like having those like even right before I go on stage that, that helps with the throat as well. And then, um, I, I learned it from watching a Lamb of God documentary where Randy like does jumping jacks and, and grunts his ABCs. Oh yeah. And, and I do that along with a little bit of minor stretching, nice. but it's getting the, the throat warmed up and then getting the body stretched out. I like to move around a bunch on stage. Yeah. So. Excellent. Fantastic, man. Uh, Jennifer, do you have any other questions for these guys? Um, can you tell us anything about your next album? <laughs> they want some info on the next album. Uh, we have a whole, what, two songs written for it? Yeah, we've got, <laughs> we've got a couple songs and, for it already. And, and they're not even like really, really solid yet. They're just kind of more, um, you know, this, these kind of ambiguous ideas that are kind of floating around in space, not quite ready to be locked down into something totally solid yet. Uh, mostly there, but like, like there's a couple things here and there that we still gotta gotta hammer down on those, I think. And uh, and then beyond that, it's it's just kind of uh, we're gonna you know once we get some time to do it, sit around and jam out some shit and see what happens. Nice. Is it hard to get everybody together? Yeah, it's hard to get everybody together. Everybody's got families. Everybody's got full time jobs. Um, we do have one day a week that we do set aside the evening to get together 
and um, coincidentally on Wednesdays, nice we get together and yeah, uh, we give ourselves a couple hours. And throughout the week, we got a group chat that we go back and forth, and we can we share a bunch of stuff there as well. That way, when we come in on practice, we're we're all on the same page already. So even though we do like to give each other the updates and what's going on, we don't really have to deep dive into every little thing and you know burn an hour of the time right there. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Um, right, new album. Um, there's more distinct influences in these songs where the first album there there were well this riff kind of sounds like that and that riff kind of sounds like that and you know we're just writing out of the pocket for that but this one is like oh wow this this has a really good clutch groove to it well let's let's dig down into like the clutch influence for this song let's see where we can go with that and not necessarily trying to copy it or emulate that style or anything but just having more fun of it that way treating it as a um challenge and, and more of an experiment and you know just being more creative that way that's cool that that sounds like that would be fun because then you can kind of like really dig into like if you really want to pursue a particular like style you can like dive into it and I, I think it speaks to the diversity that you guys have right so um that those diversity of styles within the members of the band kind of plays out. And so then you guys can have the, you know, the freedom to kind of dig into those and, and have some fun with it. Yeah. The cool. um, first couple of songs that we wrote, they were actually writing those faster than I could come up with titles for songs. <laughs> so they were what they gave the title of the song. That's what I wrote the lyrics about. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's that now that's a cool idea because uh, i've talked to a couple other bands when they're working on stuff they're, they're just calling riffs like just some kind of like name it has nothing to do with the uh, you know how it pans out at the end um do you guys so it, it sounds like you guys kind of do the same thing where it's like it's you know the big boy riff over here or you know yep. the, the the baby huey on this one or whatever <laughs> awesome <laughs> Uh, Jennifer, did you have any other questions for these guys? Tell me more about Julio. <laughs> what is it? What's what? What is he like? The the mascot. What's his personality like? Oh, oh, oh! There you go. All right. There you go. You're back. All right. Did you get the question? That, no, no. That's where you could put a commercial, though. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry don't worry I'll, I'll be i'll be editing it and putting it together hopefully it all sounds good at the end oh um, fingers crossed man you got your work cut out for you with it. <laughs> <laughs> did you get did you get that question the last tell, one no not at all okay go ahead jennifer tell us tell us more about julio and do you have more a about, song julio? about julio yeah do you have a song of him <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll eventually make a song titled the ballad of julio or something but right. <laughs> oh no, but uh bill the drummer thought that in the second verse of funky town road that i was singing about julio so <laughs> that, that's where that came into play <laughs> oh. just a, a misheard lyric that just grew its own identity <laughs> uh, i love that i love that 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 is now the mascot for the band <laughs> yep <laughs> awesome uh oh, did you see the shirts that we came out with too yeah um yeah on the front of it it says ask me about my gator <laughs> and then um you, you tip the shirt up on the inside to where it goes over your head and there's the alligator mouth on the inside of the shirt <laughs> yeah that is super cool did that just to keep with the theme of having fun with everything you know not not trying to be too serious made sure they were green shirts instead of the typical black shirts you know yep. yeah yeah just, hell yeah and it works with the gutter swamp theme right yep yep definitely yeah. and yeah. saint patrick's day that just passed having green shirts help yeah hell yeah you can break it out anytime <laughs> that's right <laughs> multi-occasional right <laughs> Well, uh, guys, I really appreciate you being on Fans with Bands. Jen, thanks for being on Fans with Bands. I just have one last question. Um, 
somewhat controversial, so hopefully it's not going to kill the band, but, and, and Jen, you'll have to answer as well. Pineapple or no pineapple on pizza? Pineapple or no pineapple on pizza? I mean, I prefer not, but it's, it's a Hawaiian pizza. It has pineapple, so I'd rather not have a Hawaiian pizza, but like, if <laughs> that's what they're, they're you know, I, I, I worked at a pizza place where, you know, I was making the kind of money where you ate what didn't get, make its way out the door sometimes. And if it was a Hawaiian pizza, then, well, you, you know, you eat a Hawaiian because otherwise you don't eat that day, you know? So, <laughs> you know, I'd rather not, but. Right. You know, All right. Not the Pineapple, it, pineapple definitely goes on pizza. But, but would you get it on pizza? Yeah, always. Oh, yeah? All right. Cool. All yeah. right. All right. Awesome. You got to get barbecue sauce instead of the pizza sauce, and then uh, use the mozzarella cheese with pineapples and chicken and mushrooms. Nice. Oh, that's a good combo because a lot of times I hear uh, pineapple with jalapenos. So That's good, too. Oh, all right. Cool. Yep. Uh, Jen, Four years. You? Hungry Howie's. <laughs> I worked for Hungry Howie's for four years, so <laughs> excellent. Heard all the combo. <laughs> uh, Jen, how about you? I'll take mine on the side, please. <laughs> don't don't put pineapple Jen, on my pizza. With you. I love pineapple. Don't wreck it with pizza, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. I don't put the pineapple on there, even if I pick it off, I still I got pineapple juice on my pizza now. Yeah, Ooh. I know it ruins it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you, Jen. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> and, and it looks like, uh, uh, Mike, you're in line with your wife, so there's no divorce happening because she's with Correct. pineapple as well. Excellent. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> awesome. Well, guys, thank you again so much for being on Fans of Bands. Really appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thank you for having us. All right. Bye. Thank you, Chuck Marshall. It's great. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Thanks a lot, guys. Later. All right. Thanks to Mike, Matt, Katie, and Jennifer for joining me on this episode of Bands with Bands. Connection issues be damned. We still had a fun time talking with the guys in Gutter Swamp about their new debut album, Full of Heavy Metal Grooves. You can catch Gutter Swamp at The Lodge in Bay City on June 25th and Harpo's in Detroit on July 23rd. See the show notes for all the details and links. These are tough times for everyone in the creative industries such as music. Your support of live streaming, purchasing music, and merchandise is critical. If you can help out your local artists, please do. If you are in the Michigan area, consider following the Playing in the Detroit Area Tonight Facebook page. It is a place for fans and bands to support each other and share our combined love of music. Thank you all so much for listening. Be sure to hit subscribe on your favorite podcast service to get each and every episode of Fans with Bands. Spread the word by reading the show and leaving a comment. We want to hear what you think. You can keep in touch by following us on social media. This is a Life in Michigan production. Until next time, be well and kick out the jams. <laughs>